Jesus of Nazareth, one of history's most influential figures. But how much do we really know about it? Misconception 1. Jesus was a weak, effeminate man. Many people imagine Jesus as weak, effeminate man. But the Bible describes him as rugged, outdoorsy, type who worked as a carpenter. In the book of Isaiah 53, verse 2 to 3, it says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Um, contrary to depictions on artworks that portray Jesus as very soft and has very beautiful coily hair, like with a touch of sharp beauty and blue eye, that is not actually what Jesus looks like. That is not how he looks like. From the description in Isaiah, it made us understand that he has no beautiful like features or something very outstanding about who he is or his physical appearance that will make us think that he is like divine. You understand? He is he's just very plain, he's just like very ordinary man of his days. That is exactly how he looks like. So that is what this chapter is trying to tell us. He looks like a person, a man that works very hard. He must have had very strong hands. The portrayal of carpenter, what is called carpenter in, in those days, is not just someone that is working as a wood worker or someone that constructs it. A carpenter can mean general uh, word for someone that has uh, something to do with construction. It can also be a mason, someone that builds houses, someone that just makes something and brings things together so that it will become um, tangible. Misconception 2. Jesus was a black man. Many people claim that Jesus was black, but the Bible described him as very ordinary, average-looking man like the men of his days. A lot of people claim that he is black, he's a black man, but I don't think that he's really a black man, he's a dark-skinned guy, because the scripture made it obvious to us that during the time he wanted to be arrested, at least that is a very popular part of the scripture, when he wanted to be arrested, he is one of his disciples that between being Judas Iscariot took some soldiers with him and then came to the Garden of Gethsemane and the code of identification was um, to like to kiss to identify the person with kiss. So it means that the rest of the people then didn't have any any way of distinguishing him. Like I said earlier in the first um, chapter, I made it clear that he looks typical like any man of his days. It doesn't have any, because when I went, I went into a little research, I wanted to know how Jews look, Asian Jews look, and I discovered that many of them, majority of them in those days were not dark skin the best way to even describe them is that they have brown skin with thick hair brown skin is better but for a dark skin jesus and uh, as a jewish man it could have been a very important feature that would dis distinguish him from the rest of the people misconception three jesus only preached to the jews some people think jesus was a racist who only ministered to jews but the Bible shows him ministering to Samaritans, Romans, and other non-Jews. Book of John chapter 4 verse 9, it showed us where Jesus was talking to a Samaritan woman. If you can bring yourself down and understand what it means for Jesus to talk to a Samaritan woman during those days, you understand that Jesus himself was doing something that could be considered abominable because during those days, there was such a very strong a racial discrepancy or racial separation between the Jews and the Samaritan. And remember, during those days, women, men, we are not considered to easily talk with women. You don't, the interaction of man with a woman 
uh, most times is only on the platform of marriage or on the platform of courtship or is more held in high regards and the, to a person of jesus who is always a rabbi who is often seen in the synagogue teaching the people it could be considered that perhaps a holy man is trying to like define himself with a woman and then again with a samaritan woman is such a like the the extreme of uh, the condition is very high that it was recorded that when his disciples came back they were surprised to see him talking with a woman a samaritan woman so it's, it's noted in that place so jesus was never a racist he was never into only jewish people and uh, most times people do sites when he, he he was talking with a woman he, he, he told the woman that uh he cannot give food meant for children into dogs the essence of that i think was later clarified even in that same chapter where he later said he, when the woman said that that the food there's there's some food that's still left there's some crumbs that will still fall from the table where children up to it so he was so amazed he said wow you have a very great faith i have not seen such a great faith and the miracle was granted to the woman that particular place will show you that he was trying to like should i say be sarcastic or he was trying to speak in a way that will test the woman or something of that nature and that will betray the point when he became so surprised about the strength of the faith of the woman so a lot of um places where he he did the like things that are, that are not really like he defied the jewish people the jewish institution or um racial segregation is all over the bible he spoke to the romans and he had friends even the centurion was his friend and so much of those things so he was not only um, ministering to the jews he was there for as many uh, types of races that were available to that enclave during the time that he lived misconception four jesus condemned all wealth and material possessions while Jesus warned against the dangers of wealth, he never condemned it. He even attended banquets and accepted gifts. I've heard a lot of people say money is the root of all evil, but if you look into that quote very well, they are not trying to complete it. Either they didn't go to, they didn't read the Bible, or they read it half, or they had another person say it, or they didn't read it by the leading of the Spirit. Jesus never condemned material wealth and as a matter of fact during his days he had a lot of wealthy friends even those that are considered as thieves and um, fraudsters and uh, corrupt politicians like his friend um, Zacchaeus that climbed on a tree to meet him and he went to his house so those kind of people we are like his his good friends he went to the house and he ate feast and it's also recorded that a lot of people gave to him and that's why that is why he had like judah judas iscariot who was um, his like treasury like accountant or someone that is holding their treasury so a lot of people do did give to him and his ministry and even to his wedding and it's all over in the bible he never condemned money he never said money is the root of all he said love of money when he said love of money it means money on its own is a neutral object it doesn't have any will it doesn't have any identity it doesn't have any it's just like a neutral object but once a human being with with his mind and his will and consciousness begins to love something outside of god and things that are spiritual and things that are beyond that are infinite begins to bring his love onto money or mammon that means that human being is trying to like put himself like like place him, his own will place money above his will above his infinite nature above his um, ability to like do things for good because anyone that loves money can be willing to do anything to get it anything anything no matter what and that is where we see that love of money is root of all evil misconception five jesus was only a moral teacher some reduced jesus to a mere moral teacher but the bible presented him as the son of god 
who performed mighty miracles and forgave sins. I've heard a lot of people say um, online that uh, he's another good teacher, good moral teacher that went about uh, telling people how to do good things, how to um, live a beautiful life and help one another and then love. But that's not actually what Jesus really represents. He did a lot of mighty deeds during his days, things that could be considered like mystical. In fact, one of the extra Bible um, witnesses that have been recorded recently, I think by Josephus, um, the way he was described there, uh, Joseph being a Jewish historian, described him as a wonder worker who did a lot of wonders during the, those days. And in Acts of the Apostles, Peter, while talking to the new um, 3,000 converts, were like trying to remind them of the mighty deeds that they bore witness. So he was a man that did so much great deeds, so much things that could be best described as very strange and mystical. These are just few common misconceptions about Jesus. By exploring the Bible and history, we can separate facts from fiction and discover the true Jesus. God bless you for watching. Please subscribe.